Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. All right, everybody, it's time for another episode of Marketing School. I hope you're ready. I'm Eric Su. And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to tell you how you can market a consulting company. So the reason why we wanted to start with a consulting company first was because there's a lot of people out there that are looking to get into freelancing or looking to start their own services business. And I think this is a great place for us to start because Neil has had a services business or a consulting business in the past. I currently have one right now. So... I think the first thing I'll I'll go ahead and kick it off, you know, when it comes to marketing a consulting business, well, for us, we, when we got started with blogging, that actually helped us quite a bit because now, you know, we are driving a good amount of organic traffic, you know, it's compounded for us over time and it has been a long journey, but it is by far and away the best performer for us. And, you know, people still continue to link to the articles that we produce. Um, We just found that, you know, the returns from that just keep getting better and better. So content marketing, it's it's something that, you know, Neil and I talk about all the time. I think that's that's something that's going to stick around for a long time and it has been effective for us. Neil? Yeah, from a lead perspective, content marketing is also the number one channel that I've seen for leads for any type of consulting or freelancing. So when you create a blog, you'll find that it'll generate more leads over time than anything else. In the short run, when you're starting off, you're going to need to generate revenue. You won't have an audience. You probably won't even have a big social profile. So you need to figure out how to generate income or get some clients as quick as possible. The tactic that I like using at the beginning is I go find my ideal clients. So I'll think about, all right, how much am I going to charge or what makes it worth it for me? And don't get too greedy at first. And where can I find those companies? So for me, I like going after tech companies because there's databases like Crunchbase that report all the new tech companies and their funding amounts. So if someone has funding or they recently raised money, they're much more likely to spend it because they're flush with cash. And what I do is I go pick from the list and I don't go too big because the bigger the company, the harder it is to get access to the right people. If someone raises 100 million, too many layers in an organization. If someone raises 5 million, they're small, you can get access to the owner or executive and you can convince them to do something. So once I find the company's in the right sweet spot, ideally raising around $5, $10 million max, what I would do is I go through their website. If I'm pitching design services, I then go create uh, Photoshop mock-ups and I tear apart what they're doing wrong and how they can improve to either capture more leads, sales, uh, improve the user experience, et cetera. If I was having a marketing company, I would just go take screenshots of all their pages and their source code because you can go view source code in the browser. And I go look at all the code and what's done wrong from a marketing standpoint. I outline it. I break it down to them. And then I shoot off the emails to as many people as possible within that organization, including the investors. Because the investors or the board members, which are usually stated on Crunchbase, they want to see the company succeed. If they succeed, they get a return on their money. Company fails, they don't. So when you send it off to these people, usually they're like, oh, this kid or this guy or this woman, they're smart. We should hire them. And that's a quick way to generate customers. Love it. And just anecdotally, you know, that's something we did in, in the past. Um, or when I, was, when I was starting out doing this stuff, basically I would spend about, and you don't have to go this long, but I was spending an hour creating videos for each company that I wanted to, to reach out to to get on the phone with. And it worked very effectively because not a lot of people are willing to do that. So you have to do the things that most people aren't willing to do because, you know, well, first of all, like Neil mentioned, you don't have a brand to go off of. And let's say you're starting to roll, you know, you're starting to get some revenues in the door and you can start to, you know, afford paid advertising. Well, in this case, then you can start to think about webinars. There's a lot of people I know, especially in the, in the marketing funnel space right now, they're just running paid traffic to webinars that they're doing and they're generating more clients from it. Um, so you can create a good informative webinar, not just as a whole hum webinar, you can actually get people interested draw them in and then offer them a free consult or like a free a free strategy session or maybe you can even charge them a little money for it but that's definitely a way to to go about it and it's been working pretty well for people another thing that you can end up doing is creating a tool this is something you do later down the road but you can create a tool like a seo analyzer so if i'm a consultant trying to get more seo business you create a tool that analyzes someone's website and as they're going through it, you also ask them for their name and email address and their budget, et cetera, before you show them the report. It works extremely well. 
The only problem with it is there's cost to doing the tool. So it's more of a long run approach once you have revenue. And what you'll find is if you do a tool, you'll get a shit ton of leads. Most of them will be irrelevant in which they're not qualified, but a small portion, 5% or so will be qualified. And it works really well because you can get enough of those people in quantity, but it'll more than pay for the tool. The other thing that I like doing if you can't do the tool because it is just taking up too much time or it's expensive, go associate yourself with some of the biggest brands out there. And what I mean by this is when I started out in the marketing niche, I wanted to do marketing consulting. So I hit up Mashable, TechCrunch, GigaOM, all the big blogs during that time. And I said, I'm going to do your marketing for free. I even hit up the popular personal bloggers like Guy Kawasaki, uh, Brian Clark from Copy Blog, And I'm like, I'm going to do the SEO and marketing on your blog for free. And once you get results, I want you to add a badge in your sidebar in the footer marketed by Neil Patel or my company name or whatever it may be because it's association. Think of celebrities. If everyone says, oh, you're Kim Kardashian's best friend, they're going to be like, oh, if Kim Kardashian's awesome and cool, then you must be too. If everyone's like, wow, here are all the popular people and Neil does their marketing, well, he, may, he must be the best. So if Neil does their marketing, then we should get Neil to do our marketing as well too. Another thing that you can add is the concept of podcasting. We're doing a podcast right now, but I also have another podcast and that's actually led to business opportunities. And it's not something I expected from the beginning, but again, you're doing something that not, you know, other agencies aren't doing. So always look around, see what opportunities are, are out there. You know, perhaps it's, it's Snapchat, perhaps it's Facebook live, but for the, the podcast, I'll, I'll just tell you, you know, we, the, the longest standing clients that we've had have come from the podcast and other times we'll get leads and this person will say, Hey, we're spending, you know, 500 grand a month and I listen to your podcast. Would you like to work together? And these leads are higher quality because they know who you are as a person and they've listened to a ton of your episodes. So make sure that the, the content is good in the first place. And then believe it or not, you're actually going to start to generate uh, good leads and you're going to generate other opportunities as well. In addition to the leads. Another factor that you could leverage is video similar to podcasting. And I don't know if I mentioned this when I talked about associating yourself with the biggest brands in the space. So when I did all the marketing for like the tech crunches and Mashables, I emailed them a PDF or Word document breaking down what was wrong and why they should work with me. And I offered the services for free in exchange for the logo once they got results. But what I also like doing or what I found to work really well, it's videos. So similar to like what Eric was mentioning with the podcasting or what I was mentioning with just the brands association and doing free work, why not go create videos like on YouTube analyze websites, do it all for free, just give away a ton of good information, stuff that people would pay for, and people will be watching this stuff. It'll be out there for ages, and they'll be like, wow, this is such great information. If this is the information that Neil or Eric is giving out for free, I wonder what their paid stuff is like. I really want to work with this person. Love it. And to close this one off, I think the concept of specialization is something that's not talked about too often. And you look at the companies out there that – Specialize in certain areas. So I'll just give you an, an example. Um, I know there's a co there's a company out there that specializes in online marketing for gyms or for uh, nutritionists, right? That's a very specialized area. And guess what? They're doing over ten million dollars a year. So when you're able to specialize and you you tell people that you're not the, you're not the jack of all trades, well, that's when you, that that's when you know other big companies in that niche are going to turn to you. Now, a good example of this in real life would be the doctors that specialize in a certain area or the surgeons that specialize in a certain area are going to get paid a lot more than the people that are just generalists. So that's something to pay attention to. Is, is there a niche that you do well in or something that you like in particular? Perhaps it's fashion. Well, try specializing in that. And then it's also going to be easier on your staff as well because you know how that industry works and you don't have to keep relearning everything every time you, you sign on a, a new client. So with that being said, this will conclude this episode of Marketing School, but we'll see you in tomorrow's. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.